we have are single access trackers are really all the rage right now. Now, I have gotten uh, emails from some audience members that say I need to start reconsidering double access tracking. Um, I have found that double access tracking is a decent solution for residential battery banks because the tracking at all times of the year takes off load from the batteries and it costs money to use a battery bank. It costs eight to 16 cents a kilowatt hour to use batteries. And so double access tracking at the residential level, off grid batteries may make some sense, but that's a pretty niche specialty market. What we're talking about here is should all utility scale projects track, at least all with flat land that you can drive piles into and my opinion is yes, because you look at the price difference between a tracking array and a non-tracking array, it's about tracking, non-tracking at 80 megawatts can get about as cheap as nine cents a watt. Tracking at 80 megawatts can get as cheap as 18 cents a watt. So tracking, whether it's 80 megawatts or four megawatts or one megawatt, will add about 10 cents a watt to your hard material cost. But it'll boost your performance by 20%-ish. And so you, the, the, you look at utility project budgets, even if they're like what First Solar was saying, that First Solar says, you know, now they're at uh, a dollar a watt plus interconnection. Well, 10 cents a watt added to that would be a dollar and 10 cents. They increase your project budget by 10% to boost your performance by 20%. That's a good trade-off. So I would absolutely consider tracking and it might be that you need to do tracking to wring a little bit more value out of your solar project. Otherwise, if you have rocky soil, you're gonna have to you know, drill out the rock, put in some earth screws, or do an above ground concrete pour. Um, and, and neither of those, I haven't found any uh, concrete ballasted trackers. I haven't found any earth screw uh, trackers uh, that make any economic sense. But uh, essentially, you can go online and you can do PV watts. Um, so let's do a quick PV watts calc. Um, for, for two locations, and then we'll call it a day. Um, because this is, this is another one of those myths that I like to dispel about what the NABCEP solar guy will tell you versus reality. You know, the NABCEP solar guy who's run through the solar community college class, uh, first off, they may not even consider tracking because they've been trained to not recommend tracking to their customers without actually doing proper economic vetting. You know, we went through this phase a few years back where there was no viable utility scale tracking design on the market, that's changed. You know, similarly, we went through this phase where solar modules started to get cheap and so it was like, well, non-tracking is more, you know, cost less than tracking, so just buy more solar modules. But, you know, if you're already doing a pole mount if you're living off grid and doing a battery bank, there might be some niche market applications at the residential level. Anyway, in the interest of time, we're gonna go to Houston, Texas. And what I wanna do is dispel the notion that horizontal axis tracking is better for locations closer to the equator and, and vertical axis tracking, which does north-south, is better the further north you go. You know, that, that is what the theory says. Well, let's go in and, and do an actual performance model. We're doing a one kilowatt array on a, on a single axis tracker uh, in Houston, Texas. And we see we're producing 1,590 kilowatt hours a year for one kilowatt array. Um, no, let's, you know, we need to take this down to a zero degree tilt first. So at a zero degree tilt, we're producing 1,516 kilowatt hours a year 
versus a 30 degree, no, a 18 degree roof mount array that is fixed in place. It would produce 1,325. So we've picked up about 200 kilowatt hours, which is maybe a 15% uh, performance boost in Houston, Texas. You know, now let's change our location and let's go to Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, you still might not do tracking because of extreme snow loading, but you know, well, you get the point. South of the country, far north of the country, we're going to do a single axis tracker, uh, zero degree tilt, same thing. So our tracker produces 1,675 kilowatt hours per year. Oh, that was at a 45 degree tilt. I don't know why that changed back. So let's go back to a uh, a zero degree tilt, so at noon the arrays are facing straight up in the air. We got 1,492 kilowatt hours versus if we did this, you know, as a fixed tilt array, maybe up on a roof, maybe down in the ground. We got 1,335. So very similar performance differences between the south part of the United States in the north part of the United States. And the reason why the theory does not hold that you know, east to west trackers are better near the equator and north to south trackers are better you know, in the north part of the country, the reason why that doesn't hold is because that assumes the Earth has no atmosphere. You know, just like we talk about winter production in other classes, the cloud coverage in winter is what's not accounted for when you get into what's the theoretical tilt angle of the array. You know, if your clouds are covered overcast in the winter time for a number of months, wintertime production doesn't matter. In fact, on an overcast day, you'll get the most performance out of an array that faces straight up in the air. So for design, it might be better to have a uh, east to west tracker that faces straight up in the air in the winter time rather than something that adjusts the tilt angle north to south. And on top of that, in Houston, it's a lot more humid than it is in Minnesota. And so the performance differences between Houston and Minnesota are there, you know, also because of humidity, which, uh, you know, if it's hot and humid in the summertime, um, you know, optimizing the production of the, each module is not as beneficial um, as if it's nice and cool.